I mean, look at me. You may call eating five boxes of Girl Scout cookies overindulgence. I just call it supporting female entrepreneurship. And now for something completely different. Welcome to Surrounded by Idiots Radio Podcast. Well, it is that time again, and you have found yourself at the Serato Baby It's Radio Podcast. Hey, everybody, it's Tony Dufresne, PhD. Really glad to be back with you. So let's get into today's show, which is how to feel happy with what you have. Now, I know that this is such an obvious or ridiculous statement, especially for you and I, because we have gone through a number of stages and gone through a number of self exploratory type of situations to where we have probably a pretty good idea of how to feel happy with what you have. Of course, it comes down to gratitude and then it's it, and it's a basic concept. And I don't think you'd be listening to me over the past however many years or even the past few episodes where you don't have an idea that that is the case and you use that on a daily basis. But I thought that this story that I came across when I was reading through again Uh, Seneca's On the Happy Life. You know, I'm a total stoic philosophy nerd, and I read through this all the time. And it's like one of those things where when you read through a book again and again and again, every single time you read through it, you get something different out of it. So I read back into Seneca's, and there was a very interesting story in uh, that he spoke about and it has to do with this dude that lived back there at in in his time. And, and he used this guy as a perfect example of what not to do and how not to be. So I wanted to share this with you because of one simple reason. Even though we all know concepts and we all have an idea and we all have the knowledge of certain things and we all know what is best for us to do and what is not good for us to do, a lot of times we don't act on that the right way. A lot of times we know it, but we don't own it. And we really don't know how to transfer the knowing part into like the everyday activities and behavior and thought patterns that we need to like make shifts in our life. So to pull back the curtain on the most effective learning style, it's in stories because our brains absorb stories like nobody's business. It hits all different parts of the brain at the same time. And it also tends to grow roots more so versus just learning something, as in from a book or from me telling you things. So let's talk about Apicius. He's the guy that Seneca referred to. So he was a part of nobility. He was an elitist, and he was all into food, 150,000% into food. This guy was like the gourmet dude in that area. And he would actually get invited to the nobility's homes to put on dinners and to entertain guests from out of town, even to the point where he was financed by the government to put on these big lavish feasts for people. Now, the problem with good old Marcus Pisius wasn't the fact that he was obsessed with food. It was the fact that that was it for him, like the beginning and the end. He had one chapter and that was it. There was like zero balance with this guy. To the point where one story that Seneca shared was Apicius hired an entire ship of guys to look for these huge prawns that he heard about from travelers. And this is no small journey. It's not like he just jumped on Delta and flew over. I mean, he's on some old wooden ship. So it takes him a bit of time to get over there. And he hired this entire ship staff to take him there. So he pulls into the harbor on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. And the merchants roll up with these supposed prawns of unusual size. And Apicius takes one look at these prawns. He goes, no, I'm good. Not big enough for him. Not enough for him to get off the boat. The dude didn't even get off the boat. Tells the entire ship to turn around. He didn't eat them. He didn't sample them. It was all about the look. It was about the, all about the physical. It was all about him coming back with these huge prawns and impressing people. This dude got lost in his own gravy to the point and the end of Apicius' story and the beginning of our story in regards to this is that this guy, and I'm not kidding you, Apicius committed suicide by poisoning his last bottle of really expensive vintage wine after learning he didn't have enough money to live his lavish lifestyle anymore. 
he just sank. And it, and it wasn't like he was penniless. It wasn't like he got to the point where he had nothing and he couldn't do anything. Apparently, dude had like a lot of coin in the bank, but he just offed himself because he knew that he couldn't keep up this lavish lifestyle. He couldn't keep up this reputation of being this guy. And what it represented to him, his complete identity as this almost fictitious creature to these other people mattered so much to this guy, he just killed himself. Now you can see why it was used as an example of what not to do in Seneca's story. And I think the bottom line here in regards to what that story represents It goes back to the basic fundamental title of this show. It's how to feel happy with what you have. Apparently, he never did. And here's why. Because if your process, your machinery is all about getting to a particular objective or acquiring something or getting the new job or releasing the new album or doing the next podcast or graduating college, when you get to that point, and stop me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you've dealt with this already before. When you do get to that point, you move the carrot. I don't think you'd be listening to this if you didn't move the carrot because that's what overachievers do. That's what perfectionists do. That's what overthinkers do. You just keep moving the carrot because once you get there, I mean, your life isn't over. You realize that once you hit that objective, then you just create another objective to move forward. Now, what happens with people who put a lot of emphasis on accomplishing things for attention. If they put a lot of emphasis on acquiring things, you know where I'm going here, right? When you get those things or when you accomplish those things and you get the recognition for those things, be it fame, fortune, it's not enough. And I'll go back for you old folks out there. I'll go back to the Gordon Gecko thing where Bud Fox sits there and says, you know, Gordon, how many boats do, can you ski behind? And Gordon Gecko doesn't answer him in terms of like, you know, 10 or 15 or 20. He basically says in the subtext, that's not the point. The point is, it's just more, 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 more. And that's part of the game that he plays. But can you see how that leads people to a Pieces tragic ending, either actually or metaphorically? So I want to read you something that Seneca said. He said, their happiness is disquiet and it's not grounded. It comes with heavy and anxious thoughts because... They have a need for one pleasure to support the other and of new prayers to forgive the errors of the former. One diversion overtakes another without seeking an end, which ends up being unfulfilled and wanting a perpetual slave to your senses. I really wanted to title this whole show a perpetual slave to your senses. But in terms of keyword search, if you know anything about that, nobody's going to look that up. So I figured I'd put in the basic, you know, how to feel happy with what you have, which is basically the same thing, but you see where I'm going with all this stuff. And that's why I was hoping that you would stay with me, even though it seemed like a pretty basic and simple process to the fact where you're going, I'm not going to give this guy 15 minutes of my time, give or take, with something I already know. So the bottom line is happiness or fulfillment, or let's say just a deep sense of well-being at any moment, at every moment comes down to grounding yourself in the understanding that that all comes from within. That all comes from your foundation. And how do you support your foundation? How do you fill up your goblet? It's with gratitude. It's with keeping things in perspective every single day. It's about grounding yourself in the understanding that you are a human being and you're a hot mess. So some days you'll be able to dial it in and you will be crushing it. And other days, you'll find yourself in a fetal position with the lights off, sobbing for better days to come. With all that being said, I do want to leave you with one thing, though, that's a little less heavy in terms of all that. Don't forget to treat yourself. And this is one of those things where it's, it's a deviation from the classic real uptight stoicism thing. But don't forget to treat yourself. It's all about balance, right? And it's also all about enjoying your life. I mean, if you go through every single day of your life and you're just pressing it down, and just uber focused and you're just in you're you're whipping yourself on your back to get stuff done yeah honestly you're going to end up 30 40 years down the road you're going to go what the hell was i doing i mean yeah maybe i got some stuff or i achieved this or i achieved that but geez it was not a fun experience along the way so every once in a while do the indulging do the treating i mean look at me you may call eating five boxes of girl scout cookies overindulgence i 
just call it supporting female entrepreneurship. So go rationalize something for yourself to create that level of balance. And I will see you back here next week with a brand new episode of this show. I hope things are great. The website for my coaching is javabud.com, J-A-V-A-B-U-D.com. You can reach me at Tony at javabud.com. If you want to go to the website with all the podcast episodes, it's sbirpodcast.com for Surrounded by Idiots Radio Podcast. Remember, be nice to yourself, indulge a little bit, and I will see you soon. Bye.